Welcome to our Portions Podcast, where we discuss the portions of Scripture that are being read in the synagogues around the world each and every week. The goal and desire of these podcasts are that you would not only learn and be encouraged by the Scripture, but also that your heart would be enlarged where Israel and the Jewish people are concerned. So I ask you to open your Bible and open your heart, and I pray that over the course of the next 20 minutes, that the God of Israel would meet us as we study His Word together. I want to welcome you to another Portions podcast. I'm Scott Volk, the leader of Together for Israel, and it's such a blessing to come to you today. I am so, so thankful that I have an amazing friend and leader in the body of the Messiah, David Harwood, pastor of Restoration Fellowship in Glen Glen Cove, New York, and a dear, dear friend of mine. And if you've been listening to our podcast, He's a friend of yours as well. David, thanks so much for joining us again. It's a pleasure, Scott. Well, brother, as, I, um, as I'm looking at our calendar, the biblical calendar, we're actually coming to an end of the year. You know, the, the, the new year, Rosh Hashanah, starts in, in just a few weeks. And as we're coming to the end of the year, we're also coming, the end of the, the year of the biblical calendar, we're also coming to the end of the readings that we're going through. We're in the book of Deuteronomy. Our portion today is from Deuteronomy 26, one through 29, eight. It's called Kitavo. If you're you're spelling it in English, friends, it's K-I-T-A-V-O, Kitavo. And it really means when you have entered. And David, I would just like to start today's podcast with a very positive thing that's pointed out in verse one and is the name of our podcast. It says, when you have entered the land your the Lord your God is giving you. And bro, I, I would love for you to encourage those who are listening today. It's interesting. It doesn't say if you enter the land. It says when you enter the land. And the children of Israel have been in the wilderness for 40 years years waiting on the promise of God. And sometimes it seems to me, bro, that we are holding on to promises that are not yet fulfilled. And it could be very, very wearisome for us wondering if God has forgotten about us. It seems like it's been the pattern in scripture. He made a promise to Abraham. He even changed his name to father of multitudes before he ever had Uh, the children of promise. And here Mm -hmm. God is saying, when you've entered the land, I see God as an amazingly encouraging figure because even in the midst of 40 years of wilderness, God is looking to really bring them in to their uh, promised destiny. What, What does this portion of scripture do to you and do to your heart and and maybe just encourage us with what the Lord's put on your heart where these scriptures are concerned. Well, this entire thing that you brought up, Scott, is is, uh, remarkable. I mean, absolutely. First of all, we recognize that God has a specific, unique, special calling on the Jewish people, on Israel. But at the same time, we also see that that special, unique calling is symbolic of, is typical of the what it is that he has for the entire human race. Yes. And so, yeah, so like he had a specific destiny and calling for that people, for this people, well, for our people, to be brought out of a place of bondage and into a place of dignity and liberty and prosperity. And he is saying, when you enter in, when you begin to enter into all that I have liberated you for, this is what it is that I want you to do. And so, whether it be other nations, other ethnic groups, individuals, families, uh, movements, uh, God has a plan. God has a plan. He has a destiny. He has a calling. And along with that, his promises are certain. And as we are led by him, because it wasn't just Israel in the wilderness, it was Israel led by God in the wilderness. Yes. It was Israel uh, maintaining the presence of God in the wilderness. It was Israel 
being this unique um, uh, ethnic group and wherever they were, a unique place which would host the manifest presence of God in a way that had not been seen since the fall of humanity. Amazing. You were talking about glory coming down, and he's he's saying, I want you to take, uh, he's, he's like, I want you to go into that land and have it, but they're also taking his presence into that land. And the presence that he that they are taking into that land is a land that, although promised, was the was the geographic center of the only uh, uh, group of eth- the only group of nations on the planet that we know were specifically cursed. Wow! This is the uh, this is uh, this is Ham's son Canaan, Ham's son Canaan, who are uh, uh, like Ham and his descendants were not cursed. But Canaan was cursed. Canaan was cursed. And you have all of these people with the most abominable practices and, and the presence of demonic forces that are present in that land. And Israel is going in not just to displace people, but to bring in presence that wow. will displace those things. And God is saying, I am the one who is determined to bring about the result of reclaiming this planet for myself. And it's going to begin with that piece of territory, this turf, and you people, you're the ones with whom I am going to do this thing. And so, like, this is like an exciting, this is an exciting transition that is being offered to the human race and that is being spoken of to Israel when you go into the land. So when you enter the land, the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance and you possess it and live in it. And then what's being promised immediately is there's going to be prosperity. There's going to be safety because what's next in this section is instructions concerning the tithe. Amazing. Let just just bef- before we get to the tithe, you just said something so profound that I've never considered before. That these guys are going in. You you say Canaan. Many people would say Canaan. You're probably saying it correctly. People who say Canaan probably are not familiar with how it's spoken in Hebrew. But Canaan, Canaan, is inhabited with people who are cursed. David, that is remarkable because look. Look at the picture that we get. God's people in the wilderness, in the wilderness, so important, being prepared in the wilderness to go and be a light in the nation that has been cursed. And when I think of the wilderness and I think of Jesus who was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to come back and bring redemption and promise to people who've been lost without him, that's a remarkable thing. No wonder, no wonder God is wanting his people when they enter in to be a light that they're called to be so that that the nations will see the favor of God. And as you rightly said, when they go in, there's prosperity. Let's talk about that just for a minute. It's interesting to me that the first thing, you know, that is being spoken of in this portion, it says in verse two, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land, the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket, go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priests in office at that time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I've come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. Verse four, the priest shall take the basket from your hands, set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Verse five, then you shall declare before the Lord your God. And then it just goes through how God has watched over the people of Israel. Why is first fruits right here significant? Why, why doesn't God say, you know, if you have anything left over at the end of your harvest, bring it to me? Why is God saying, take some of the first fruits and bring it to me? Well, that's a great question, Scott, and it sparks a whole bunch of thoughts in my head. First of all, Israel was the firstborn of the nations. It doesn't say that Israel is the only child. It says that Israel is the 
firstborn. Yes. And so there is this entire thing, and, and they are dedicated over to God in a way that the other nations of the world, as of yet, have not been dedicated over to God, except within the framework of the believing communities. Mm. The believing communities comprised of the remnant of Israel and the remnant of the nations, this one new man, glorious thing that God has done. So anyway, back to uh, this thing. Why the first fruits? I mean, I'm... I think it's because, you know, this entire matter of, of loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, it's like, of course we want to give him that which is first. Yes. But he's, one of the things that he does is he guides our love. Mm. It's like we can have this overflow of love for him, this overflow of love for others, and yet we still need extrinsic instruction, instruction via principle as to how to guide this expression of spiritual life. I love and it. what I would like to point out, Scott, and starting around verse 5, is God says uh, to the ones who are bringing this tithe, say this, right? My father was a wandering Aramean, and I think it's important that we would remember where we came from. Right. It's like, Israel, remember where you came from. Remember wow. where you came from, and look, I brought you in here, and in as you have been obedient to me, I have caused what it is that you have done to prosper. Wow. But don't forget where you came from. <laughs> don't forget where you came from. Don't forget the bondage that I took you out of. The Egyptians treated us harshly. They afflicted us. They imposed hard labor on us. And they, Israel, in bondage, did not see the fruit of their labor. Wow. The fruit of their labor was all given over to these earthly taskmasters. And God is saying, are you grateful? Are you grateful? This mm. is a display of gratitude, worship, of dependence, and it's to be used within the context of a worship feast. And in addition, this is the third year tithe, which from my perspective was in addition to the normal yearly tithe yeah. that was to be given over to uh, the needy, the ministry, and the yet-to-be-established stranger in the land. And it's like, I delivered you. I want you to use this tithe to deliver those who are in need. And I want you to do it as a, as a high priority, as a first priority in your given year, this third year tithe. I want it to be within the framework of a worship feast where you are blessing those who are in need of care. So it's a glorious thing, this thing, this it, tithe. It, it's, it's so beautiful. I, you know, it's sad that there are, there are many people in the church world to, today that would say, that tithing is legalistic. It's 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 part of the the law, so to speak. But isn't it interesting, David, when we think back to Cain and Abel's offering? I don't have those scriptures in front of me. I think it's Genesis three or four, somewhere in there, where somewhere. one one offering, Cain's offering was rejected by God, and Abel's was accepted. If I remember correctly, the word says that Abel gave of the first fruits and Cain mm -hmm. it's when Cain gave it was something like in the course of time Cain gave his offering so I I don't know whether you know, I'm no theologian but it's interesting to me that in scripture it clearly says that Abel gave of the first this was long before God spoke about tithing but there's something mm -hmm. about giving of the first that I think really pricks the heart of God towards those who are giving in other words when we when we do the right thing first it seems like everything else comes into right perspective i'm thinking of in the book of matthew seek ye first the kingdom of god and then all these things will be added unto you or how about this one yeah. i'm not ashamed of the gospel it's the power of god to salvation to all those who believe to the jew first and also to the nation. I think when we get our firsts correct, then everything else seems to fall into line. It has nothing to do with legalism. It has everything to do with honoring God with what he's given us. He gave us salvation through Israel, through the Jewish people. Why should we neglect Israel when we're preaching the gospel? He gave us the land that we're living in. Why shouldn't we give him the first portion? I, I, I'm just... Just I didn't even think about this before you and I chatted here, but it's just a remarkable thing, bro. That you're—it's it's like you're 
I think it's just beautiful. Your turn. My turn? My you know, turn. So Your much, turn. <laughs> uh, there are so, there, these chapters are so rich. They're so glorious and they're so dreadful, these, this portion of Scripture, because it speaks of the, the blessings and the curses and all these things. And you mentioned that you, uh, that you did not really want to, uh, to <laughs> um, concentrate on the curses and who, who can blame you. But basically these things come into this type of thing. If you're being blessed because you're being, you're being, uh, you're, you're, you're honoring God in all of your life. It's like everything that can possibly go well will go well. You will stay in the land and be a light to the nations. And on the other hand, as far as the curses are concerned, if there's covenant unfaithfulness, then God is saying everything that can possibly go wrong will go wrong. Yes. And exile, exile, ultimately that threat and promise, that destiny prophetic thing in the exile is the culmination of the curses. All yeah. of the blessings are to take place in the land, and God has given to each of us a specific land, a sphere, yes. uh, uh, in which we are, to which we are called to, to, to conquer and cultivate. And if, as you are saying, we do put first things first, I believe that God will give us grace to prosper within the framework of the sphere to which he has called us. Yes. And I mean, this, this is... The most. This is the most incredible. These are the most incredible. Uh, um, uh, most some of the most glorious and most grievous scriptures in the entire Bible. But it is a setup for the prophetic word that comes to Israel in the following chapters in next week's portion. I mean, like it's it's a remarkable thing. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we have this truth. We are called to maintain covenant faithfulness even as we take a look at israel's history and the babylonian diaspora and the diaspora to which the majority of the jewish people are still participating in this diaspora today it's right. sort of like um oh god would you please do something and end this time and it, it causes me to be hungry hungry for the return of the messiah yeah. when all these things are going to end up being made right when the perfect pattern of heaven and earth will be present in the person of the Lord yes. Jesus, Yeshua. I mean, these chapters, they cause me to be hungry for the fulfillment of every good word that the Lord said in, in the beginning of this, this portion is, uh, when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance and possess it, it's like when the Lord sends the Messiah, Yeshua, yes. back to this earth, then Israel and the nations and the resurrected saints, we're going to enter into the beginning of that for which we have truly been created, a full-fledged participation in the kingdom of God in the age to come. And so, you know, that's where my mind goes. David. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, my gosh. How glorious that is. And it's interesting because we're coming to the time on the biblical calendar of the Feast of Trumpets, knowing yeah. that one day there is a trump that's going to sound and the Lord himself will come down and establish that very um, that very promise of, of the new Jerusalem and his rule forever and ever. You have so deeply encouraged me. I can't believe our time, our time is up. Before you go, friends, listen, you've got to get a hold of David Harwood's material. He's the author of three books. David, give us the title of those books and please tell us how we can get a hold of them. Well, you can get a hold of them through Amazon, uh, looking up David Harwood and uh, the, the book that has been uh, like the foundational book is called God's True Love, which is about the nature of God's love for all of humanity. The second book is For the Sake of the Fathers, which is about uh, God's unique love for the Jewish people through the lens of the New Testament scriptures. Yes. And the third book, which is uh, most recent, which is the easiest and shortest to read, is Leaders Do Unto Others, talking about the priority of loving people um, that leaders are to embrace. And so, yeah, you know, um, God's true love by the mercy of God has been uh, chosen by uh, um, uh, Dr. Michael Brown to be used as a textbook 
in the fire school of ministry, and I, I have been uh, I've been glad to have had the opportunity to contribute to that uh, that school. I would encourage anybody that is looking for ongoing biblical uh, training to uh, to look up um, um, the the uh, the fire school of ministry because. It has, there's so much that is offered there. And it is a somewhat rigorous course of study, but it's really well worth it. So there I'm, I'm awesome. advertising. Awesome, uh, awesome, you, awesome. You know something about the Fire School of Ministry. Stuff. I, know, I know a little bit about the Fire School of <laughs> Ministry. Yes, yes, yes. Friends, listen, if you've been blessed by today's podcast, can I ask you to do something? Share it. You might be listening from our app. You might be listening from Facebook or YouTube. If you would be kind enough just to share this podcast with those that you think it would be a blessing to, I really encourage you to do that. And don't hesitate to look up David Harwood. You can Google David Harwood, David Har- David Harwood Restoration Fellowship, Glen-, Glen Cove, New York. If you're ever in the New York area when there's not a pandemic, show up at his congregation. You will love it. David, thank you so much for joining me today. I love you, and you've been such a blessing to us. My, my privilege to greet Beth and the family for me, all right? All right, David, thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening to our podcast today. For more information about Together for Israel and the work that we're doing in the land of Israel, please visit our website at www.togetherforisrael.org. We look forward to you joining with us next week on another Portions Podcast.